Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another Cornerstone tutorial. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video we are going to take a quick look at the power of headers and what Cornerstone really allows you to tap into when editing a header, both natively and extending that out with some custom CSS. So without further ado, let's dive in. The first thing we're going to do is just create a header from scratch, even though we do have one up here. So let's click the plus sign, click on create new header. And here we have a blank canvas that we are starting from. Now I am just going to do start from scratch, but you can also use a template if you would like. And here we have our first bar for our header. And you notice within the header structure, the containers are labeled as bar, which is the outermost container, almost like a section, and then a container. And then within a container is where you can begin to place your elements. So you can also add multiple containers to a header as well. Now, the great thing about Cornerstone is it really allows you to tap into the capability of headers and multi-region headers. And the way you're going to do that is if you wanted a sidebar header on the left or on the right, or even a bottom anchored header on the bottom of the screen here that's different from a footer, you would do all of that by simply clicking on the outline here, clicking on settings, and enabling multi-region headers. Once you've done that, and you click back to your outline, you'll see that you can now add a left anchored header, a right anchored header, and even a bottom anchored header. Now, obviously you probably wouldn't do all of these together unless you were going for some kind of crazy design, but this is really nice when you're building out custom dashboards and you want that dashboard look with the left side menu here, that bottom anchored header here within that dashboard look as well. So there's really a lot of possibilities here. But in today's video, we are just going to look at a standard top header. So let's go ahead and get rid of these here. The first thing, let's go ahead and just kind of build this out a little bit. So what I'm actually going to do is add a second container. This first container, which is set to stretch and fill the space, we're going to just set to standard. So now we have a container on the left and a container on the right. This is probably something similar to what you'd be working in on a standard setup. We'll go ahead and add our logo in here and we'll just see what we have available in our library. We'll just use the 23 here. And there we have our logo. And then we'll add a navigation. We'll just use an inline navigation for now. We're not going to style this too much, but you might have something like that. Now, this looks really good, but I really like when it fits the width of other content on my page. You'll notice this here is at 1200 pixels or whatever you have your global width, which is this here set to, and we currently have 1200 pixels. So what we're going to do in our header to make sure that that all works is just come down to our max width, which is currently set to none. And we're going to set this to 1200 as well. And that way it matches the width of our content and gives us a nice line all the way down with our content here. Now you'll notice when I scroll down, my navigation disappears out of view, and that might be an intentional part of your design. But if you'd like for that to stick around while the user navigates throughout the site, and even while they scroll deeper into a page, that's called a sticky header. And we have that option right here. So this is set to zero by default. But if we give this a positive value, let's just give it something like 0.5, right? Now, when we begin to scroll down the page, you'll notice that this sticks with us all throughout our experience, which is awesome. Now, let's say you didn't want it to stick with a user when they were scrolling down because that might block the content. But if they start to scroll back up the page, you want to make the navigation visible. Well, this is a new feature that's been added in. And so you can simply come down here and click on scroll up, which now will hide the navigation as you scroll down the page, just like as if it weren't sticky. But as soon as I change direction on my page scroll, that navigation shows up again, which is pretty nifty. Now, the great thing about building websites in Cornerstone is that you can really extend the capabilities of what you're doing. There are a lot of native features here for headers, but if you wanted to take this a step further and change the background color of your header bar when you're scrolling, we can do that as well with very, very simple CSS. Let's go ahead and disable our scroll up here and let's add a positive integer to our trigger offset. Let's go ahead and just do one, something like that. Now what we're going to do is actually jump down into our custom code here and more specifically our header CSS. And now let's go ahead and paste in something very simple, which is this here. It's basically just targeting the class of the bar x dash bar dot x dash bar top dot x dash bar h dot x dash bar is sticky. And then we are specifically targeting the state x dash bar fixed, which is a class that's added when we start to scroll and when we have sticky enabled. And when that class is recognized, we are going to change the background color to pink. Now there are other implications here. You might have to change the color of your navigation using something similar to this as well. And you might have to change the color of your logo to make it visible. But something like this is really great to getting in the weeds on some of the more custom capabilities of building out your header. 
So now when we begin to scroll and it gets that class of X dash bar fixed, you'll now see that it changes to pink. We could also change this to green and it's as simple as that. Now there are so many options with headers. This is just scratching the surface, but hopefully this helps you get comfortable and get started with building out native headers and even adding in a little bit of header CSS. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. Leave questions in the comments below and we will see you guys in the next video. Happy building.